The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. In our previous episode, we set up the dog collar for the automatic dog door opener. This used to be a shock collar that would shock the dog when it got too close to a certain object. Now, instead of sending shocks, it sends pulses back to a base station. That base station is gonna be what opens the door. Hey, Mickey. Does it, does it meet your approval? It's like half the size you are, but I think it'll work. While well, we're here at the Dane County Humane Society talking to all the animals, getting great advice on how we should build this, Felix is back at the shop making a mock-up of the doggy door so we can test it in a controlled environment. I'd better get back there and make sure everything's wired up and ready to go. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. While Felix works on the dog door, I'm gonna wire up another 555 one-shot or monostable multivibrator so that when the door gets the signal from the key fob, it'll stay unlatched for about 10 seconds. That way the dog has plenty of time to get through. The uh, solenoid that we're using, we actually pulled off of that laser printer from our Earth Day episode. It should work. It also takes very little current, it's like 120 milliamps. So if it's on for 10 seconds, that's not a big deal. And we won't need any additional circuitry to control it. We'll just pass the signal from the key fob detector through a TIP-102 NPN Darlington transistor. These are the elements I'm going to combine. Here's the key fob receiver. Here is a five volt switching power regulator. We need 24 volts off of this wall wart in order to activate the solenoid. We could use a linear voltage regulator, but going from 24 down to five would actually create an excessive amount of heat. By using a more efficient switching regulator package, we can do the 24 volt to five volt conversion much more efficiently. This is a 555 one-shot timer. This was the test timer we used for the key fob itself. We're basically gonna use the same circuit, but on this guy, it's gonna run for about 10 seconds. So if the receiver sees any sort of signal whatsoever from the key fob, it'll activate the coil for 10 seconds, which should give the dog plenty of time to go in or out. So I'm gonna get wiring. I didn't have to build a miniature circuit this time, which made it a lot easier. Here are the parts. This is your 24 volt wall wart. Uh, we need 24 volts for the solenoid. 12 won't cut it, 15 will do it. 24 is pretty common. Our 24 volts comes in here and it goes into this switching voltage regulator, which is much more efficient than a linear 7805 regulator. 7805 would certainly work, but the bigger difference in voltage you have, the more heat it creates and you need a heat sink. This guy will work nice and cool. So it's sending five volts to the 555 and the key fob detector. So what happens is the key fob detector, you know, obviously it will be running. When it detects a signal from our dog collar, it will trigger the 555 to do a 12 second one shot. You can adjust it with this potentiometer here. And the uh, 555 will send out a high pulse for 12 seconds, which will activate this TIP-102 NPN Darlington transistor, allowing the current to flow through the solenoid unlatching the door so the dog can get in or out of the house. I'm gonna plug this in and we can just do a short test. And there's a light so we can, you know, in case the solenoid didn't click, the light will also be on, so. I, I hooked up the light before the solenoid, you know, one thing at a time. I'm gonna turn on my base station, about three bars. Let's do a test, okay, that represents a dog door. Here is the dog collar, I'm gonna come into range. Let me in! It's going to let the right one in. And I'm continuing to send it pulses, so I'm gonna get out of range. And set to about 12 seconds. That'll allow the door to come to a complete rest and then it'll close up again. There we go. Yeah, this should be a lot easier for animals to get through. So what we wanna do here is take this solenoid and center him, although we want the latch part to be centered, not necessarily the solenoid. He'll be a little bit to the left or right. Okay. So let's countersink some holes for his little feet here, and then we can bolt him in using this mounting point. And then how he'll interface is, with this is we'll need a kind of a, a latch of some sort. So when he's open, this can swing either way, but when this is centered, the latch will catch. 
And then I was also thinking we could use some of those rare earth magnets and neomidium ones. And this could hang down and basically we can embed a magnet here and here and then attach magnets sideways here. So it'll help this thing center faster. So after the 12 seconds is up, when this thing pops up, it'll be in the latch. Now it's time for a tech timeout. Today I'm gonna to talk about another project we've been working on forever, America's Most Haunted Pinball. We've embedded a Bluetooth module onto the final version of the motherboard, or I hope it's the final version. And that allows us to control the game with Bluetooth, either from a smartphone or a tablet. The idea is you don't really play the game with it, but you can test the lights or look at the switch matrix. It's basically used for troubleshooting and diagnostics. Let me give you an example. Felix is working on an app that will allow us to do this with a touch screen, but for now I'm just gonna type in manual commands. So light 99.0 means to turn off the attract mode. All right, now all the lights are off. Oh, for some reason, Jerry Ellsworth's Twitter came up. You can type L911, 991, not rescue 911. This will re-enable the attract mode. So instead of sending these commands as text, there'll be a nice grid on the screen, which will look very much like this matrix here. And uh, basically you'll be able to go boop, 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 test the lights. If you've got the game open, you can be touching the switches with your fingers and seeing if they're working. And this grid will be on your phone and these will light up telling you, yes, that switch is working or no, it's not. I can even send pulses to the coils. Pretty cool, huh? So yeah, I think this will be really handy. Uh, it's a new way to troubleshoot your pinball. You can use a serial monitor with your computer. You can use the screen and the flipper buttons or a smartphone or tablet. Should be a fun feature. Here at the Ben Heck Show, we care about our viewers. And when our viewers started asking for more of the Ben Heck Show, we decided to oblige. We're going to start adding exclusive bonus footage over at the Element 14 YouTube channel for those looking for extra content. Things like my exclusive tour of my shop, my top 10 affordable tools every modder should own, behind the scenes footage, and even a profile on our very own Allison. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to get alerts each time we add new footage, and then head over to my page on the Element 14 community for build resources, on-demand videos, discussions, and giveaways. And remember to keep telling us what you want. We're listening. Thanks to all of our loyal fans and viewers. And now, back to the show. I'm gonna drill some holes in the wood and then embed some magnets. That looks about right. We just got a drill press, and this is one drill job I can't possibly do with a drill press. <laughs> oh, the irony. Make sure this is the right depth. It's pretty good. There. sure I put these in the same polarity. Yeah, I think I need a slightly larger hole. Or I could just wiggle the bit a little bit. It's magnets. This is obviously a mock-up of a door that you'd find in your home. 
But if you're doing this for reals, you'd probably want to get a project box for this guy here. And then also attach this near your door with double-sided tape or using the hanging bracket. Because th these don't actually have to be that close to each other. Like, if this is anywhere near your door, it should trigger the collar on your dog. Although one thing you'd want to think about is the fact that this takes, you know, wall power. So you'd, be, you'd have a cord going to your door and where is the cord? Could the cord get caught? Would the door pinch it? Things like that. Maybe the door has a generator on it so when you move the hinges it powers up the battery. That's probably overkill. Next week's episode, Super Green Doggy Door. See if it goes. All right. Yay! Let's bolt this sucker down. <laughs> yes. It'll never move again. <laughs> All right. Give me some lock nuts. Oh yeah. Okay. Well here. Oh yeah. Here is the completed automatic doggy door system. This base station emits a signal that this collar receives. When this collar gets the signal, it sends a pulse back to this unit. When this unit gets that signal, it has a 555, which triggers this solenoid for about 12 seconds. During that time, the door swings open and close. We have some rare earth magnets, see that? To help it find the center so it gets on the latch. Now it's time for this project to go to the dogs. You might remember a previous episode when we built the automatic dog treat dispenser. We had Lola, the amazing wonder dog, on the show to demonstrate it. She was able to leverage that role into a very successful Hollywood career. She made this movie, and then this movie. However, her career hit a stumbling block when she decided to remake Waterworld. You could say her career went to the dogs. But now that her career has paused, she's agreed to be back on the show to help us test the automatic dog door opener. Come here, Lola. Okay, let's put on this collar. Don't worry, it won't sting. Shake. No, shake, shake, shake. My career in dog training is not gonna take off. Oh, there we go. You ready to film? You ready to walk through that door? You've got to get through that door. You know, after you remade Waterworld, you need to start opening doors again in your career. We're going to do a literal example. You're gonna actually walk through a door, so. You ready to do this? It's gonna be like John Travolta when he made Pulp Fiction. Yeah. But then, then I guess you'd make Battlefield Earth and ruin your career again, but we'll cross that bridge later. This barrier between the door represents an outside door in a house. So this is the outdoors and this is inside the house. So Lola is going to try to get into the house using the remote dog door opener. Lola, I'm going to need to see your papers, please. Okay, so that's the dog door opening project. Uh, Lola was a little scared of the door because she's never been trained to go through a dog door, but we did get her to walk up to it, triggering the system and unlatching the door. So the theory works and that's the important thing. Well, thanks to Mickey here, we had a great idea for a project that turned into an awesome dog door. Now, Mickey, if only you could get adopted. Whoever is watching Mickey, please bring him to the adoption center. His family is here to take him to his new home. Did you hear that? You're gonna have a new home! Yay! Oh, he's so excited! Well, that's all the time we have for today on The Ben Heck Show. In our next episode, we're going to be taking apart a classic computer, the Mac Classic from 1984. We'll see you then. Hey, wait a minute. Do you know where Allison went? Hmm. Allison, we were filming a really important scene and then you ran off. What gives? Well, I figured the tripod could stand in for me. Anyways, I wanted to see the other animals that they have here. I already cuddled with a cat, and now here I am, hanging out with this rat. Oh, well, I guess that rhymes, so, okay. Hey, did you see the bunnies? Oh, those bunnies are super cute! Remember, even if you can't have animals in your own home, you can still help. For instance, here in Dane County, they're always in need of critter cuddlers. People to come in and cuddle the animals. Yes, that's something that is required in this world. I mean, <laughs> darn, twist my arm. You and your ass! Ah! Good girl. Can I get kisses? There we go. 
Don't worry, I'm not gonna propose to you. You will bow before me! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should be in some stupid sitcom. <laughs> Allison just wants to crawl through the dog door. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get up now because my, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Don't forget, you can subscribe to this channel, join the Element 14 community, Follow us on Twitter and become our friend on Facebook. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.